Slow stitching is pulling thread through fabric. It's part sewing, part embroidery, and part mixed media. If you can stitch it, you can attach it to your piece so you can use buttons or beads or shells, metal, tags, or even paper. It's completely open-ended and anything goes. And that's the beauty of slow stitching. But it can also make it overwhelming. Online, there are lots of challenges and inspiration. And today, I have just one for you. Inspired by Halloween, I'm gonna make a stitched ghost piece. I'll show you my process and my end result, as well as some variations. I hope you'll join in and create your own Stitch Ghost piece, and then post it online with the hashtag Stitch Ghost. We'll create a community of silly Stitch Ghosts online. Thanks for joining me. Now let me show you my process. So to get started on my Silly Ghost stitching piece, I have a six by six piece of batting here, and that's kind of the basis. The only thing I've decided on is this fabric for the background, and it's just a neutral Halloween inspired fabric with this gray and black check. I like it because of the neutral colors. So from here, I'll just start building my piece, and I always start by the fabric collage. So I'll put my batting down. Then I like to bend over the sides, put a pin in its place, and I'll do that on all four sides. Because I like the Halloween prints, but I'm not really going for something um, very trendy, I just have some neutral fabrics here, but very Halloween inspired. I have this beautiful burlap. I think it has a great texture. And then I have these prints here, a couple of plaids, some black cat, black and white fabric that I'll use for accent pieces for the fabric collage. And then I have my white or off-white pieces. These are just pieces of muslin that I have that I can use for the ghost. And they're all different shades of like cream or white. I'll see how I feel about those when it comes to the ghost part. You can also use a piece of cheesecloth. This is a piece of cheesecloth that I tea dyed. So it's a little off-white and that gives another interesting effect and more texture. But right now I'm going to start by building up this base before I add the ghost part. I also have just a couple of traditional orange colors here to make my slow stitching piece along with the black and the white to do my stitching. So I'll just build up that collage background and I like lots of texture so I like tearing the fabric as well. I'll speed up the design process but this way you can see my method. So I'm pretty happy with this as the background. I'll just repin it in place. I have some pieces overhanging and being folded over as well. So I have my first layer, then my pieces right on top of that first layer. So I'll add a few stitches to hold this down and I really want those stitches to show. And then I'll figure out in my next step where I want my burlap to go to add texture. So now that everything is tacked down, just with big wide stitches with the white stitches, I can decide if I want to add a few more pieces or just hold off for now. I want to incorporate just a little bit of this fabric in, so I'll add a little bit here and there. And I like the way this is sticking off up top, so I'll figure out a way to have another piece sticking off. So I'll tack that down and then we'll come back and work on our next layer. So here I have my six by six inch piece of batting with my first layer of this plaid. I've added an additional layer of fabric scraps that I collaged onto the piece. And now I want to incorporate some of this burlapy texture. So I'm just going to cut a piece. This is five inch burlap. 
So I'll cut a piece and then I'll decide how I want to use it. Now I don't want to just cover up everything, so I'll probably cut up this burlap further. And here's where I play around with the design. Now that edge of the burlap is kind of an interesting little piece too. So I have two pieces with edges and then this long piece that I can cut further. I think I'll do that. Just make some very organic shaped pieces here of this burlap. I want to be able to see what's behind it, but I do like the way that looks. Maybe I can add this piece as well. Well, I'll stitch these pieces down and then we'll come back and add our ghost before we start our slow stitching. So now I have my pieces just tacked down with these big stitches. They can either be removed later or left on. And in most cases, I leave them on. I just add stitches over them for my slow stitching. Now I'm at the point where I want to add my ghost. I made a quick little sketch here, very basic sketch of a ghost shape. And because I want to make it a silly ghost, I added just some fun accessories. And I'll figure out as I go which one I want to add. I'm not going to use the cheesecloth. I've used this in the past. It is a little finicky, but I prefer to use muslin. I'm not sure if I'm going to use the white or this off-white. I think I'll go with the off-white. I like to draw my sketch right on top of my piece so I have an idea of how big to make it. And if I want to add a hat, I'll be sure to keep that on here so I get the right proportion. So I'll just take a Frixian pen here that can be removed when I'm done with it, just with a little heat, so a little warm iron will remove this pen, and I'll just make my sketch. The beauty of making a sketch is I don't have to cut out the wrong size. I can play around with it and continue to make it as I go. So there I have a ghost, I can lower it down. If I wanna make a hat, I can do that. If I do a hat, I'm gonna add another piece of fabric or some stitches. I have my ghost. I'll trim around it with my pair of scissors here, giving a generous amount on the sides, somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. I can fine tune this later if I don't like the shape. And there I have my shape and I can decide where I want to put it right on my piece. Now I've made the ghost before with a white outline as well as a darker outline and I find the darker outline in most cases is more effective. So I'll just stitch with the dark thread a small little running stitch all the way around my piece here just to give it the shape and I can even change this edge here just to make it a little looser. Then I'll come back and show you how it looks and we'll remove this marker as well. So now with a running stitch I not only tacked down my ghost shape but I also created those little edges here for the bottom, the base, and the rounded arms here. And just to remove that marker I just go over it with a warm iron and it just comes up just like that. If there's any areas that really got underneath the fabric or the thread I'll just go in there and make sure to really get it. And I just use whatever heat that fabric can tolerate. So now I'm working on my ghost 
Now I want to add some accessories. So I think I want to first work on the face. And I could add a pair of sunglasses or a, some happy eyes, cheeks. And when I create my silly ghost with the accessories, I like to stick to one or two, maybe three, but really the minimal for this ghost to really make that ghost shape stand out. So I'll make the eyes and the mouth. Maybe I'll add little cheeks while I embroider. Now if I want, I could add additional accessories, a bow tie or a hat, pearl necklace, something fun. I'm going to leave my ghost just like this. I'll embroider the face and I'll show you how I do that technique. And then the last step will be to create that slow stitching around the piece on the background just for added interest. I could stop there as it is, but I like to really work on the slow stitching. I find it very relaxing. So I'll spend a few hours on that. But for right now, we'll start with that face. I'll take some of this number eight pearl thread for the eyes and the mouth. And again, I just go in there, threaded my needle, and I'll create a stitch here, either a split stitch or a stem stitch, where I come up and I stab in a little bit of the ways. This achieves a nice curve. And then instead of letting this, pulling this through, I come up halfway between my front and my back stitch, and then I pull it through. Then I'll make another stitch, same length as my first one, and I do the same procedure where I pull my, I bring my needle up through about halfway between the first and the second stitch I put in and I continue this all the way around that curve of the eye. I like to pull that loop open so I know that I'm getting my needle right in the right spot. And then when I finish with that eye, I'll just stop right there. If it makes it like a little double eye there, I can go back in, loosen that up just slightly and then go back in with my needle underneath the thread that I just put down and then thread on top of it just to hold it in the place that I like, just like that. And I'll start the same work on that other eye. Make my first stitch pull it so there's a little loop before I secure it, bring my needle up to the midway point, and continue all the way around that curve. Because the ghost is silly, if the eyes are a little off or a little uneven, a little wonky, it kind of adds just a little more character to our ghost. So I have my eyes and now I'll go for the mouth, same exact procedure. So now for the cheeks, I can either embroider French knots and just have little pieces sticking up here for the cheeks, or I can do a very small satin stitch filling in that shape, that round shape, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'll very carefully pull my needle through right at the very last edge. And I'll just fill it in.
and I'll repeat the procedure on the other cheek. So there I have my completed ghost face with my iron. I'll remove any of that marker that was used as a guide. And now I'll start my slow stitching. I'm just going to stitch areas off of this ghost so that that ghost really stands out. When it's complete, we'll come back and I'll show you, and then I'll show you some variations using the same techniques. So here's the completed little Halloween piece with the silly ghost. I did a lot of little slow stitching around here, maybe two and a half, three hours worth of work, where I just sat at my leisure and just added different colors and different textured stitches to make my piece complete. Now I wanted to show you a few others using the same techniques and just different modifications based on my mood and the colors of fabric and stitches that I chose. So here's the six by six piece and here's an eight by eight piece that I did and you can make it any size. I added a bunch of cheesecloth here that I tea dyed just to give it an old stained look. And then I first went with an outline with an off white stitch and it didn't really show up so that's when I added the black stitch outline to really make it pop. I took the colors from the background, the purples and the wine color and I added a few little stitches to highlight that in here as if I was painting but using threads. Then I added a fun bow tie and a little chapeau. It's a kind of a cute fun look. The background is full of different shapes, torn fabric, ribbons and just lots of stitches and for this one I really focused on rectangular shapes both in the stitches, the fabric pieces and the ribbons. I made another one here and you don't have to be limited to human type ghosts, a little puppy and a little kitty ghost. The same procedure I used my scrap of white off-white cream fabric to make that shape and then I just stitched in the background and I really love how those background stitches make the focal point of this slow stitch piece really pop. I used different papers here on this one, picked up a few little colors of orange. Here I did orange and purples and the puppy with the tennis ball. Then I just have a couple more to show. And to really get the most out of your silly ghost, I have bunches of layers of fabric here to create that ghost body. This ghost is holding a pumpkin with cute little pink cheeks. And this ghost has a hard time seeing, so I made him with thick glasses. Simple stitch background, the simplest one, and yet it really stands out. I hope you'll try your hand at one of these silly stitched ghosts. And if you do, use the hashtag stitched ghosts and I'll take a look at it. Thanks for joining me today.